Hey what's up subscribers, welcome to Guyanese News. Today we have the teacher strike that we are going to play. But before we start playing the teacher strike, we are going to address how a prominent ex-former MP from the APNU was busted again. And the reason why no corrupt politician does ever go in jail in Guyana. Guyana is one of those countries where there is a lot of politician who name has been calling in devious acts. But not one day the government or the people them of Guyana could say yes, this politician gone jail for corruption. But we are going to address in this video the first politician under the APNU that was caught stealing. But nothing that nothing was done to the whole situation. Viewers and subscribers, welcome to Guyanese News. If you're new to this YouTube channel and you want breaking and trending Guyanese content, please smash the subscribe button, leave a thumbs up, and leave a comment. There are some comments that people complaining that I cannot speak properly, I do not know how to pronounce those words. But this channel is a normal Guyanese just sharing his opinion. If you want more professional news with a lot of lies, check out NCN, check out AGP. Those newscasts you are going to get professionally done, but with narratives and lies involved. But Guyanese news is an unbiased, unfiltered, and does give Guyanese the content they deserve. So we are going to talk about this politician who was caught in a drunken rage and crashing into a vehicle. We are going to find out if he's going to go to jail. Former Minister of Health, Dr. George Norton, has been placed in custody after a reckless crash where he hit another vehicle and he was highly intoxicated. Basically meaning he was drunk. He was supposed to be the health minister but he is drunk driving on the road and Mr. George Norton has been suspected of being a corrupt politician. The reason why Guyan is saying Mr. George Norton is up to the same ways is because of the news that came out. Mr. George Norton was the first member of the APNU party that was caught in some crooked dealings. He was the Minister of Amerindian Affairs. That was Mr. George Norton's first position, Minister of Amerindian Affairs. And the books last millions. And Mr. George Norton could not give account for that. And he was not jailed. He was not indicted. He was eventually replaced and sent to be the Minister of Finance, the Minister of health excuse me so after thieving the monies from the minister of Armenian affairs granger appoint george norton of being the minister of health where he could thief more money so that is one of the reason why guyanese is saying it doesn't matter how much a corrupt politician has been proven he never got to jail no top businessman no top politician, no top person of high stature, never go behind bars. And we all know in this country, a lot of crooked deals have been taking place. Even the president was saying the amount of contract that they're sharing out, corruption involved. But no action was taken. So Mr. George Norton, who's the former minister of health, is being charged and placed in custody for being intoxicated and in a vehicle crash. We don't know how far this is going to meet, if it is going to go to court or what is going to be the situation. But the whole bottom line is, corrupt politician and corrupt businessman in this country don't get justice. They must always be the law and get away with all of those things. That is one of the reasons why so much corruption still rampant in Guyana. This is Guyanese news where we discuss 
breaking unbiased unfiltered news if you want more make sure you subscribe press the thumbs up button and leave a comment check out and we're gonna take a few scenes in a short while we're gonna be speaking to president of the Ghana Teachers Union Mark Light See, we have um, Miss Nemo Flubes, who is a member of parliament and also a, a teacher by profession. Uh, Miss Flu. If I can solicit a comment from you, it is day 15 of the you got it day 15 of the teacher strike. Um, we heard no indication from the government as yet that they that they're willing to come to the bargaining table with the Ghana Teachers Union as a member of parliament and as a teacher. I know you're responsible for youth, sports, and culture now, but as a member of parliament, how is this affecting you? And as a teacher, how is this affecting you? It has serious effects on me as a member of parliament that represents the interests of our people. It is quite disheartening to know that the government will take a position not to engage with the union to address the issues that is going on there. As a teacher, it is affecting me because I have all my children at home. And so I have to be out here in the struggle every day, still go home and work with them, talk with them on them getting the work done. They are very anxious to come out to school and I'm quite sure all the other children are anxious to come back to the classroom. That alone should push the government to engage the union and discuss on the interests of our teachers. My thing is, happy teachers will bring happy students in the classroom. And so we want them to engage the union so that we can bring this matter to a close. It is too long, 15 days is too long. Yeah, not every morning from out here. It's great strength, great courage, because you have to find someone to look the kids and still come out here on the front line to let them understand teachers have rights and we have needs. Thank you very much. Let's go across the road and see if we can get um, some comments from some teachers as well. And so we can hear the chants of the teachers.
Uh, so now we're going to speak with the you got it? the president of the Guyana Teachers Union, Dr. Dr. Mark Light. Uh, Mr. Light, good morning. Um, I know this is day 15. Do we have a clear indication from the Guyana Teachers Union that we are ready to go back to the classrooms? But yes, a clear indication all along. And even today we stand with that. They're ready to go back to the classroom, but we await government's response through the Ministry of Education or the Ministry of Labor to meet with us at the table so that we can agree on how that going back would happen. You've been asked this question over and over. I know that you get the indication that government, or do you get the indication that government is unwilling to come to the bargaining table? Yeah, obviously that is a clear message we have gotten for the last 14 days and uh, we recognize that to say you care and to, and to act caring is different and what we have seen is a conscious effort to act on caring by this government and we have gotten no indication that they value the educators of this nation. Have the children of Guyana been unable to have quality education for 15 days, that is unconscionable and that is not what any government would want to do to its citizenry. So what would you say to parents out there who are saying that the teachers and the union are very unreasonable? I think those parents are blindsided. Um, they have not really gotten a clear understanding of what teachers go through. In fact, many of them see the school as a daycare center and the fact that they can't drop off their children to school and they have to make alternative arrangements may have been the reason why some of them are saying that. But those good parents who visit schools and understand the struggles of teachers recognize why we are out here and they are with us, they are standing with us in solidarity and that is why many of them have been keeping their children at home because they recognize that the teachers are out here for a just cause. Do you believe this strike is making an impact as we enter 15 days? Well, the union indicated early on that the strike has been impactful because the education system is disrupted. And if the education system is disrupted, that in itself is an impact. Also, it is impactful because teachers are not coming out from one education district. Um, district. We have teachers from all the districts, the 11 districts in education here, all 10 administrative regions. So it is impactful, but it's just government's um, position of arrogance, their position of wanting to show who is boss, um, has kept us out here all this time. If you don't see your desired result, what is your next move? Well, like we said, uh, we're going to be out here as long as it takes. And um, as you can see, the teachers are outside and we're prepared for the long haul. You said that last week you said that um, it's expected that you would see more support this week. Um, have you seen that? Is that yes, um, we have seen more support. Um, we're going to share some pictures and videos across what is happening across Guyana. We've gotten more support. Um, there was a little bit of tailoring up because the sun and all of that, some teachers did not come out on the protest line, but they are supporting the strike. Um, but we're seeing more physical support out here today. And I will share those videos and pictures with you so you can see what's happening all across Guyana. Thank you. Um, that is president of the Guyana Teachers Union, Dr. Mark Light, commenting on day 15 of the nationwide teacher strike. So this is a situation outside the Ministry of Brigdam. The Ministry of Education on Brigdam rather. <laughs> uh, nationwide teacher strike. This is Georgetown teachers from Region 4 as I understand it. Protesting against government's unwillingness to come to the bargaining table strike for better wages, improved working conditions. This is in front of the Ministry of Education. Hey, Ron Brigdan.